Hi, welcome back. We've seen this scene in an earlier video and you've probably noticed how realistic these trees look. Well, you could achieve that kind of look by post-processing in Photoshop, but then you'd have to fake the shadows and many more visuals to get the look right. Well, that's not what I call efficient. Renderworks has the ability to use flat image resources for trees or people and integrate them into a scene, have them cast shadows and much more. These objects are called image props and that's what we have here. You'll notice that when I use the flyover tool to change my view, these trees always remain facing the camera. That's because they're not real 3D trees. These image props were created by using cutout tree images. We'll see how that works in a second, but first let's have a look at the wireframe. As you can see, image props have the ability to consist of two cross planes. This is important for creating realistic shadows. Renderworks will still only render a single image, but use both planes to calculate the shadow. OK, so how can you create your own image props? Oh, by the way, Renderworks comes pre-equipped with ready-to-use image props of plants and people to get you started. You only need to create your own if you want custom resources. So, obviously, you need an image to start with. Let's say we wanted a maple tree. An easy way of finding the right resources is to append your Google search with the word cutout. It will prefer knocked out images to those that have a background. I like number 7, so I'm going to select it and take a screenshot. Please respect the copyright when you do this, by the way. Remember, I'm only showing the base technology here. So for the next step, all you need is a single menu command. You find it under Model Create Image Prop. I'm going to select the image I have just created. I'm checking Crossed Planes, and I'm going to name my image prop appropriately. Once I accept the dialog, the image prop is placed in the drawing. The trouble is now I have a maple tree, but it has a solid background. So when I draw a ground plane and add a directional light source, it casts a solid shadow, which is not what I wanted. OK, let's see what we can do about that. I'm right-clicking the texture to edit it, and I'm going to have a look at the transparency channel. We've seen quite a bit about transparency, and here's a new way of using it. It's called an image mask. Renderworks allows to choose any color or even range of color hues to be used as a transparency mask. For this you can either import a separate image or just use the current resource. So let's choose transparent color. Now I can simply pick the color in the left image and adjust its sharpness and tolerance with sliders. The right image gives a good preview of what to expect. So when I'm satisfied with my settings I click OK and the texture dialog shows me the masked image in the texture preview. When I OK that, my maple tree is now a proper cutout with realistic shadows. Thanks to the crossed planes, the shadow will look good regardless of its orientation. So I can change the azimuth of my directional light and the shadows will travel around the tree without revealing that we are essentially dealing with a flat image. Let's move this guy to the side because I want to show you something even better. If you have an image resource with transparent pixels, you don't even need to set the transparency mask. Renderworks is able to recognize these pixels, which are also known as an alpha channel. So I'm going to create a new image prop, and I'm choosing a PNG image, which has the tree already knocked out. I still click on Create Mask, but instead of defining a transparent color, Renderworks recognizes that there are already transparent pixels present, and the alpha channel option has been enabled. All I need to do now is choose the alpha channel, and that's it. I'm done. Let's go back to the rendered scene because I want to look at one more property of image props. To demonstrate this I'm going to switch my render mode to renderworks style that sets my scene to a night render with the appropriate renderworks background, lighting and render parameters. I'm also going to switch off directional light. This should give me a nighttime scene. However, once the rendering has finished, my image props seem to be lit or have a self glow. Let's see why that is by looking at the texture again. You can see that I have two textures for each of my image props, a day version and a night version. Looking at the day version reveals that the image prop texture uses a glow shader by default. It is set to not emit light and I have manually dialed it down to 70% already. The glow shader is set to ignore any shadowing effect to give away the flatness of our image props. That is also the reason why we're seeing glowing trees in night scenes. So what you do to have image props ready for both day and night scenes is to create a symbol with both versions, each in its own class. A quick look at the night version and you can see that we're using no reflectivity at all. 
I've set up a saved view to toggle visibility of night and day versions inside my tree symbols. When I switch to the night version, my trees come up in the rendered scene as you would expect them to. When you look at the navigation palette, you can see that day and night classes have been swapped. So, we've come to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching and see you next time.